Let's take you away from politics for a moment and bring you this story. If Europe passes anti-hunting legislation, it will have devastating consequences for tourism and livelihoods in Southern Africa. Now, that's the warning from the Southern Africa Community Leaders Network. Uh, um, it's to visit Europe and the UK to make its voice heard in parliamentary bodies there. Also involved in the campaign is Resource Africa SA, and its CEO, Leslie Janssen, joins us now to talk more about this. Thank you very much for your time this morning, uh, Leslie. Before we get into the details of this particular issue, perhaps a broad uh, understanding of what exactly is currently happening around this issue. Uh, good morning, and thank you for this opportunity. What's currently happening is the UK, Italy, and Belgium are all proposing laws that are aimed at undermining hunting tourism in Africa. And all of this is done in the name of biodiversity conservation. And they want to do this by banning hunters from their countries from bringing their trophies, the remains of hunted animals, home with them. And if they do this, um, there will be many rural African communities that will be seriously affected in terms of livelihoods by these laws. Mm. What is the reasoning that these European countries have provided in the decision that they're moving towards? From what we're understanding, the reasoning is, is that it's basically for purposes of biodiversity conservation, but it is done in a way where it is totally disconnected and removed from the realities of communities in Africa living with these resources. And so what a lot of uh, a, a communities in Southern Africa has done, they've come together and they've decided that they will, as a delegation, actually go to the UK as well as the EU Parliament, the European Parliament, to speak to uh, European policymakers and UK policymakers to inform them that biodiversity conservation in Africa, uh, it involves communities living with sustainably using and managing this wildlife and living off its revenue. And that paradigm seems to not have been a part of the approach uh, in these laws being conceived. No, absolutely. And I just want us to talk more about the communities that benefit uh, from this kind of um, a tourism attraction that has uh, really been in South Africa for decades or Southern Africa. Um, the communities that benefit from this, and of course, there's also job creation and many other benefits uh, that communities would be losing out on if this happens. Yeah, quite correct. African communities and hunting, it has been a uh deeply part of the culture in the region. The African communities have lived with wildlife for generations, for centuries even. African communities have practiced wildlife conservation uh, by using wildlife in sustainable ways for their own sustenance, which of which hunting is quite central. And they've always been able to sustainably um, manage these hunting practices as communities. And today they're organized in these conservancies, which is very well run, placed areas which man manages these hunting tours. And the animals targeted for hunting are specifically selected. Most are old and older males, and many are in some ways uh, problematic to their uh, populations. Nothing goes to waste. The meat is often given to communities as important sources of food and proteins, and the hides are valuable too. And so we're finding that the animal welfare campaigners are leading anti-hunting campaigns that lawmakers respond to living in the global north and are totally removed, as I said, from the African lives mm. and wildlife, undermining this relationship. No, absolutely. And of course, we can't deny that those concerns about a sustainable hunting are valid. And I mean, one is interested to find out in terms of what conversations are you having as an organization with those kind of stakeholders to say that actually we are doing this sustainably uh, and we are not doing it in any way that will endanger the ecosystems that currently exist. Yeah. As I, as I uh, mentioned earlier, not only is this delegation uh, planning to, and it's a big investment, 
for these uh, communities through the Community Leaders Network to come together and take the time to actually travel to the UK, to the European Parliament, to speak to policymakers so that we make real the realities of rural African communities on the ground. But there's an extensive campaign also happening currently that Resource Africa, uh, in partnership with this uh, network of community leaders, are setting up in various ways, engaging their national states within Southern Africa to inform them about uh, Make, to sort of ensure that there's advocacy in place to make them aware of um, these uh, impending laws. Um, there's also African communities uh, are also organizing themselves locally to ensure that there's awareness. So at multi-levels, there's really this engagement and strategy from the Community Leaders Network to ensure that there's awareness uh, around this issue. No, absolutely. And of course, this is going to be absolutely critical, given the fact that the tourism industry suffered quite uh, devastatingly during the peak of the COVID-19 pandemic. No, you're quite correct. Um, and uh, photo tourism, for instance, is not uh, able to be a, a form of sustenance in uh, all of uh, Southern Africa communities. Uh, although hunting, you know, the to the revenue from to mm. uh, trophy hunting, uh, in for instance, Namibia is up to 100%. Communities are benefiting from this revenue. Um, in Namibia, Zambia, Tanzania, uh, as well as um, Zimbabwe, the revenue generated is up to 16.35 million US dollars per annum. Uh, you've had things like um, uh, clinics, schools, bursaries, uh, many community development initiatives have been able to be run successfully and impacted livelihoods over the years. So we cannot afford in the African region for this revenue uh, to be undermined in any way given what, how communities have been able to adapt over time and uh, convert these practices into revenue where they're able to help rebuild their lives after our, our terrible history. No, obviously, and of course, it is a difficult conversation that you are having uh, with uh, these European bodies. But ultimately, the middle ground that you are hoping to reach, if there is one, well, the middle ground uh, we're hoping to reach is there, there is a clear ask, uh, and the clear ask is that um, this thing of uh, trophy hunting, we understand the sensitivities around it. The focus for us should be on the communities and what they are able to, to do with it. It's sustainable, it's regulated, it's well managed, and we are asking British and lawmakers to take into account how these laws will be impacting their livelihoods. Let's allow these communities to be able to voice and participate in your legislative processes without undermining your own sovereignty, but also understand and take the time to respect African voices, to respect what we are building, to respect our rights, to sustainably manage and, and utilize our resources. It's also important to note the African Commission recently passed a resolution where it supported uh, these communities' rights to sustainably use, sustainably manage and conserve, namely pr affirming their rights to their resources, which includes hunting. And so that's a, that's a very, very important resolution that the African Commission has passed. And we're asking the middle ground is for respect of those rights and those decisions. Thank you. No, absolutely. Thank you very much for your time this morning, Ms. Leslie Janssen, joining us there uh, from uh, Resource Africa, talking about uh, the uh, hunting economy and really what it does for communities and the decision that European bodies are currently looking at, the impact that that will have on those um, communities and those local economies there.